Hey everybody, I've been talking about making this video and I appreciate Don staying after me. Uh, this is Don, by the way. Most of you already know Don. Don is soon to be <laughs> a member of our church. <laughs> we'll talk about that. And she's, uh, so I need to edit that already? <laughs> <laughs> she, <laughs> she's a, a registered nurse, right? Yes, and 32 been, years. 32 years? Was she like started when you were like eight or something? How did that, wow, that's awesome. So registered nurse, I thought that would be awesome because I've been, I've been threatening to do this video about taking care of ourselves, you know, eating right, stuff like that. And I'll be honest with you, I'm just Harold. Okay, I have some ideas and I've spent a lot of time studying it myself and trying to practice it. I used to be, I used to be a fat guy. <laughs> I just, I saw a video of myself uh, playing softball and I thought, I'm a pig. So I went on a diet and I changed my eating habits. The diet I went on probably wasn't the healthiest thing to begin with, but I made some changes. And uh, I, like I said, I've been studying this or doing this or practicing this or looking into this in a lot of different ways for a number of years. So I'm gonna share a little bit of my thoughts, but I thought how much cooler it would be to have somebody that actually knows what they're talking about. <laughs> I told you she was a registered nurse, right? But so, I'm not a dietitian. Got it. She's learned some things too. So I got like a little outline, and of course I had to alliterate it. Um, but I was thinking, I wanted to talk about first, what's, why? Why are we doing this? The purpose of this video. Um, one of the obvious purposes for doing a video like this, the idea of kind of getting a handle on our health, is because we're in the middle of a pandemic. Well, hopefully we're not in the middle. Hopefully we're someday going to come to some sort of an end. But in a real sense, COVID's not really going away, is it? Nope. It's, we're just all going to have to learn to live with it. It's another one of those things, and this one, this one is difficult. Um, we've had stuff like different flus around forever. I mean. You know, you got the bird flu and the variations of that and the swine flu. I didn't, as a matter of fact, I don't even know anybody that got either one of those myself, but everybody's getting COVID. Never seen anything like this. Um, so, you know, we've got, and this isn't, <laughs> we get past this one, there's gonna be something else. There's always something. And unfortunately, the older we get, the more susceptible we are to stuff. Um, so it's the, you know, kind of the idea of kind of getting a handle on our health. The other reason for making this is because of some of the shortages that we're facing. Um, my daughter called today and she goes, what in the world? She, my wife had her on speakerphone. She goes, what in the world's going on? She goes, I'm at the store. I can't find anything. She goes, the produce is bare. She goes, Every, well, she goes, there's stuff here, but nothing that I'm looking for. She goes, they don't even have cucumbers. You know, and some of the, you know, shortages that we're experiencing and some of that stuff, but also it's, you know, there's shortages in medicines, uh, shortages of staff. Well, there's just, um, as far as the medicine goes, there's medicines that are very common that we've used for years and years and years, and the hospitals just can't get them. Then we may have them have it this week and then not have it again for a month or so. It's always back ordered or because we just can't get it. And supplies also. I mean, one week we were out of nasal cannulas, which is something so many hospital patients use. I mean, we were able to substitute mask and whatnot, but you just can't get this stuff. It's not available. And, you know, the, unfortunately, you know, it, it affects the patients. It really affects everybody. We've, we've kind of really become dependent on that stuff and, and actually kind of spoiled by how available that stuff has been through the years. And, and it's, at least for right now, it's not that way. Mm -hmm. um, I think to a lot of people, I mean, years ago, you could go to the hospital for anything and 
now you can't because we don't have the supplies and sometimes the staff to take care of you. I mm. mean, it's, it's very difficult. That, well, you just mentioned staff. Another shortage that we've been facing is like healthcare staffing. And that, of course, that affects our, our health care itself. I mean, yeah. So, and that's not just because a lot of people say, well, because they didn't get the vaccine. It's not all because of the vaccine. People are leaving health care, a lot of it because of COVID and what we all went through. I mean, physically and mentally, a lot of people just said, I've had enough, but they were close enough to retirement. They, they left. And I know a critical care nurse that we have, and she's an excellent nurse, but mentally she couldn't do it anymore and she's now working in the lab so she doesn't have the responsibility to take care of the patients because it's too difficult i i can't even imagine i i you know do know that i know our local health care facilities there have been a bit of a rotation in staffing and things and i know that there's a ton of i know i know a young person that's that studied was excited about about going into this and then basically stepped into it during this and it's kind of now being like I'm changing direction it's it's tough and so the, the shortage in that area is affecting us greatly you know so again it's kind of another reason for us to kind of think about how we can take control um, and you know, charge of our health um, I, I saw a verse, I was reading this to you, I'm going to talk to you like we haven't already talked about this, but <laughs> I saw, I was thinking about this when we were, okay, Dawn is like really organized and really smart and stuff, and, and she put together, she yep. sent me this, this, this really detailed outline, because I said to her, I said, would you be willing to, because to, she kept bugging me about doing this video, I said, would you be willing to do this with me? I absolutely expected her to say, no, click. <laughs> but she I, said, <laughs> that's what I did do. <laughs> <laughs> but she, she said, yeah. And so I said, well, jot down a few thoughts, man. Then she sent me this. It's like, holy cow, it's like volumes. And it's really good stuff. And I'm like, wow, she's so organized. And so I just put an outline together about 10 minutes ago. <laughs> But I, I had a thought for a verse that I'd never thought of in this light before, and I was kind of excited about it, right? Okay, anyways, let me read it to you. It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, in verses 19 and 20. I, I love this. Paul says, what? <laughs> Just first word, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? Now, I've always heard that this verse in this light where he says you know you you need to live in your body that, in a way that pleases God but I never thought of it in a light of the fact that this body doesn't belong to me that it, it's, it says what know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you which ye have of God and ye are not your own for ye are bought with a price therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's he said he bought me with a price. Now, we always talk about how he purchased our soul and our spirit on the cross. We're going to be with him in heaven. But he, he literally, the Bible says, he purchased our body. And so that means, you know, we talk about God, uh, us being a good steward with the things that God's entrusted us with. You know, our time, our money, you know, our efforts. But I never really thought about it in light of God entrusting me with a body. He said, I want you to take care of it. You know, do I have to answer to God for, I think so. You know, if I was to go out and say, you know what, I'm going to jump off a bridge. God doesn't want that. I would be terminating my life early. Can I do the same thing by not taking care of this? Am I not being a good steward? Anyways, I just thought about that. I thought, aren't we supposed to be good stewards? Wouldn't that, wouldn't that include our bodies? So that's kind of the purpose of this. My second point. Do you have anything on head? Nope. Okay, good. <laughs> Second, my second thought was this. Okay, purpose of this video. Second one was preventative preparations. Things that that we can do. 
kind of get us in that mindset. Okay, what can we do to help uh, prevent us falling apart early? You know, um, I mentioned this already, you know, the idea of getting a handle on our health. Uh, one of the things that uh, Dawn put in her notes here, and I was looking at she said, I, was, I just put this together while I was working. <laughs> but she said, well, when, I did. Yeah. She said, when, uh, there was a point in there where she said, when, when we're young, we think we're invincible. And boy, that's true. Um, I know you had mentioned a couple examples in your life and family, but, you know, it's. Uh, you just don't think ahead how what you're doing now will affect you later. I mean, that's a big, you just don't think of it. I mean, I think of some of the stupid stuff that we did. We used to jump out of the hay mows. Well, whoever looked to see if there was a pitchfork there that we could be impaled on, you know? We just never looked. It was just something that we all did. And like I said, well, in my notes, was our friend Jed, who, when he did the foundation for our house, his big thing was he would always go to the top of the foundation and jump. Well, now Jed can barely walk. His knees and his back are shot from jumping all those years. You know, just because that's what they did. Who could jump the fastest? Who could jump the furthest or whatever? And you just don't think of that stuff. Not to get ahead of where we're going with this, but maybe this would be as good a time as any to mention that I think another way, you know, when we're, when we're young, we basically, I'm hungry, I'm just going to grab whatever to eat. Absolutely. Oh. When I drive, I drive, I mean, it's a three hour drive one way. And I find when I come after work, it's already eight o'clock and I get tired by the time I hit Binghamton or something. And I find if I have something to snack on, it keeps me awake. Either that or Ed's on, you know, if, usually Ed's on the phone with me, we'll talk a lot. But if no one's on the phone with me, I get tired and I snack. I, I think about all the times I've loaded up on burgers or, you know, stuff, fast food. Mm -hmm. You know, I, burgers are great, but I mean, well, we'll talk about that. <laughs> But I mean, you know, some of this fast food stuff or, or just, you know, a bag of chips or this or that or, or whatever. You know, a lot of times when we're young, we've just, we got into that habit and we think we're yeah. invincible um, and st st stuff catches up with us, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I saw a video uh, on YouTube and it had to do, I don't even remember why or how I came across it. It was a doctor who was also a uh, trainer, a professional trainer, and he was, um, talking about weight training in different phases of your life. Now, I, I lift, okay, I try, it's nothing. I can't even really call it lifting anymore compared to the way I used to lift, but I, I still, you know, I, I like doing it. And I, you know, it hurts and, you know, I've got arthritis, but I just, I don't want to give in to getting old, right? But I, so I watched this video, kind of, what's the word? I was a little cautiously watching it because I was, I was waiting for the guy to go, you know, after you get to be a certain age, you probably ought to stop. I'm ex I was expecting that. I hear that. He went through the cycles, the 20s, the 30s, what to expect. He went up into the 80s. And, he's, and, and, and instead of saying, um, you're going to get less benefit from it the older you get, he did exactly the opposite. He said, if anybody needs this kind of exercise, he said, it's seniors. Mm -hmm. He said, think of it this way. He said, you're in your 80s. He says, you're benching, you're working out, you're squatting, whatever. He said, I'm not talking about using heavy weights. He said, but if you could squat, if you can work out with 50 pounds, 100 pounds, he said, you can lift a gallon of milk. He said, you've got a way better chance of being able to live by yourself and, and, and continue to, to do things on your own mm -hmm. if you're staying active. And I think that's the key, you know, this idea of just what, do we, what, do we, what can we do now to improve our health, you know, to prevent, you know, some of these things, some of these, why, why is it, I, why is it that people, some people that get COVID are just wrecked by it? Seemingly, I mean, younger guys, and then some people, even older guys, people, I say guys, generically, um, 
older people seem to handle it okay. I, I don't have any answers for that, but I wonder if some of that has to do with this. Well, the healthier you are going into it, the, the easier time that you'll have. And like you said about lifting weights or, or whatever, just staying active, it keeps your bones healthy too. And, you know, you don't want to break your bones. Yeah, but yeah. But if you just... We don't if, want to break bones. If you just sit and watch TV all day and then you go out and try to do something, you slip on the ice or whatever, because you're not keeping your bones healthy, yeah. better chance of breaking them. And I guess that kind of leads us to my last thought, which is kind of the, the meat and potatoes, the you know rubber meets the road or whatever other cliche I want to use right now. Um, what can we do or some practical changes that we can make or things that we can practically do. Um, was that my point exactly? Positive changes. Positive. <laughs> Got to stay with the script. Positive changes. Um, okay, I put this at the top just to get it over with. Because everybody, we're still kind of at the beginning of the year. Everybody, one of the... <laughs> The, if, you, if we were to take everybody's uh, New Year's resolutions, always at the top of everybody's list, I'm going to lose some weight. Man, I saw something the other day online about one of the, the biggest reasons people, uh, one of the biggest reasons why people have died with the COVID thing has been obesity. obesity. Yeah. And that affects a lot of things. Makes your heart work harder, makes everything work harder. I mean, I do surgery, so, I mean. It's harder it's, to find stuff. It's harder. <laughs> it's, it's hard. It's hard. I mean, the one day that we talked about this and I had that horrible case that I was quitting, I was done. You know, um, you have a 350-pound person, now it's an emergency surgery, and it just makes everything so much harder, so much more difficult. And it's rough. Yeah, and, and, and there's no reason. There's no reason to be. It, I, I know sometimes it can get really, really discouraging, especially when I when I first went on my diet, right? Um, and I was on it for about uh, let's say I started in September and I went to if I remember right, this is back in two thousand four, September, and I think I went until February. And I got down to where I wanted to be. I, I, I had these bizarre, I don't even know why I set these numbers for my goals. My, I, I weighed in, I think I was like 240 when I started. And I went. I wanted to get to 202. I don't know why I wanted 202, but I figured 202. So I got down to there and I thought, you know what, I'm going to stay on it. To be honest with you, I felt really good on the diet. I, wanted, I said, I'm going to stay on it and just get under 200. And it was weird because it was like plateaus. Um, there was times where I wouldn't lose at all, and then there was times where you'd lose real fast. And I dropped. I got down to 202, and I thought I'm gonna get down to 199. And I stayed on it for a few more days, and I dropped to 189. And I thought, okay, that's enough, you know. And then I just started, you know. I figured that's I'm gonna break the strict diet part of it. Um, but it got there was times that were really discouraging because I wasn't, you know, you wouldn't lose anything. And I know sometimes, but that was years ago here not just more recently I did it again or I tried to do it again I couldn't lose anything it my metabolism apparently is that much slower or whatever it just didn't I was in my early 40s at that time now here I am but that t I was in my late 50s it didn't work so well but it's funny because now I found that for me, the most effective way for me to lose weight is to just slightly change my diet. Um, I, I get so, I, I don't even know why I put together this, but <laughs> because I'm so far out of it right now. Um, let me, I want to, I talk too much. I want to hear, well, okay, let's, let me start with exercise because that's what I got first in my notes here. Mm -hmm. We'll go back to diet because everybody hates the word diet. It's even got the word diet in it. <laughs> Or exercise, um, uh, we we talk about that sometimes, and it scares people because now they're thinking, "Oh man, I got to go to the gym. You know, I've got to buy all this equipment." And Don says, "No." Nope. Well, the American Heart Association always pushes a, that or ten thousand steps a day. 
10,000 steps. 10,000 steps a day. And it's hard to get 10,000 steps a day. But you got like, like one of them watches or something? Or do you just count them? Every time you get up, you just I count I only your have 4,000 today. 4,275. What is that? Is that one of them? I don't have one. It goes through my heart rate. It, I can do an EKG on it. Really? I don't you do an EKG? Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, that's your heart's a muscle. And you have to keep that muscle healthy because really, you got your heart's not healthy. It affects every it affects everything. Anything I think anything to kind of get our heart rate. Yeah, healthy. walking, going for a hike, swimming. Oh, just being active, yeah. right? Yeah, and I think doing it. You Jason know, and, Killian around the yard. Yeah, and setting us and, and really think about it. I mean, is is that worth thirty minutes a day? Plus, you're outside. Unless you have a treadmill and you do it inside. Well, that's true, but I think everybody needs the fresh air. Sure. Yeah. Even, I, even though it's cold out, you can still go outside a little bit. But just going outside and walking. Well, absolutely. Just walk and, a and hill here and there. and Anybody can afford that. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Just like I wrote this down. Just get moving. Get your heart pumping. And this idea of increased lung capacity, too. You know, getting where you're breathing. Mm -hmm. Exercise. Any other thoughts on exercise? Mm -mm. Just get moving. Okay, Don't done. care what you do. Just, she said, just, just get moving. Don't care what you do. Just do something. <laughs> don't be a couch potato. No, don't be a couch potato. Calisthenics. We should have like a. Remember Jack Lalane? We should put on. <laughs> I told my wife. I said we're going to do jumping jacks today. She goes, you do dumping jumping jacks. I'm not doing jumping. <laughs> Jack Vaguely. Yeah, Vaguely shut up. That's, I'm a lot older. Who was the other guy that wore the little short shorts? Uh, that was uh, Simpson. What's not Simpson? Richard, Simmons. Richard, Richard Simmons. Simmons. Yeah, that was more your style. I was more of a Jack Lane. <laughs> 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 okay. How about diet? Let's go back to the diet okay. thing. All right. This is. I just try to stay with my notes here. Diet. Uh, I'm not talking about fad diets. Okay, now if you want to try, I, I don't know how healthy some of those are. Some of them aren't. And most of them, they'll work for a short time and that's it. Yeah. Yeah, and people kept telling me when I did the diet I was on um, that they said, oh, I know a person that lost a whole bunch of weight. But then as soon as they got off the diet, they, they, they put it all back on. And I thought, well, they wouldn't have to. Because they just went back to their old eating habits. Absolutely. Um, and I knew I couldn't stay on that diet very long. So when I stopped, I thought, what am I going to do different? So what I did different was I decided there's certain things I'm not going to eat anymore. I quit eating bread. I don't eat bread. Okay, I don't eat pasta. And these, all of these, most of these have one thing in common, but I didn't eat bread. I don't eat pasta. I don't eat white potatoes and I don't eat any desserts at all ever <laughs> when I first came here <laughs> first came here and went to Chuck and Peggy's 50th wedding anniversary and their daughter Kathleen had made them a cake and they cut the cake and they didn't know you know they they were just I guess honored that the new pastor was there for their 50th anniversary and Chuck brought the first piece of cake to me. Now at that time, I had like, oh, let me see, what year was that? That was 2006, so I hadn't eaten a piece of cake in two years by then. <clears throat> they brought it to me and my wife looked at me and she goes, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to eat it. That was the last piece of cake I ever ate. <laughs> I haven't eaten cake since 2006. Didn't make you sick? No, it gave me a headache. Um, but I am basically the same weight as I was when I quit the diet. Um, and I feel a lot better. Um, I, my appetite's good. I, uh, it, it was just not, not huge changes. One of the things when I first, this is just an example, and we'll, you'll understand a little bit later why I'm telling you this. I love Italian food. I thought, I can't do this diet. I knew I love. I mean, I'll eat a sandwich, but I thought, okay, I can do without it. I guess I can have a burger. I just don't eat the bread, mm -hmm. right? But I thought, how am I gonna? I love Italian food. How can I not eat spaghetti? 
<laughs> now, now they have all sorts of pastas that are made from all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. But back then, no. I thought I love I love spaghetti. And I thought, wait a minute. It's not the spaghetti that I love. I like the sauce. I could put the sauce on something else. So I would put it on uh, French cut green beans, or I would put it on spaghetti squash. You know, I was like, there's ways to do this. I, uh, the idea of dieting is sometimes, sometimes we make it a little harder than it is. And I'm, it's just kind of making changes. And I wanted to ask, Gone right in front of all you guys. What, what kind of changes could we make in our diet that would help us? Um. <laughs> well, they say you want to eat everything in its most natural state as you can. The more you put on it, the gravies, fried, whatever. I mean, obviously, you have to cook it, but you don't need all that other stuff in uh, it. I mean, ham is great, but you think it's been soaked in a brine or injected with something to make it taste so great. <laughs> so, I mean, you're better off eating pork than ham because it's the more it's processed. Okay. Wow. I need to write this down. And, and obviously <laughs> vegetables, like I said, you have to eat a rainbow. Yeah, I saw that in your notes. Eat a rainbow. Okay, what? What does that mean? Like, color? All the colors. You eat all the colors because you have so many more vitamins and that you get. I mean, each vegetable has its own little ah, so special more, vitamin, I guess, in it. And the more color, the, the better. The more color. Eat a rainbow. Oh. It's not rainbow Skittles. <laughs> that is not a vegetable. And peas are not a vegetable, so you don't have to eat them. It's only because you don't like peas. They're nasty. Peas are good. Nasty. Kids, don't listen to <laughs> I remember, I remember as a kid, I never liked spinach. And then I realized years later that Popeye, the cartoon, was propaganda. Mm. And that moms put that out so kids would eat their spinach. Because I would eat it because Popeye did but it's good for you. And you know what? Over time, yep. you start to like it. Yeah. You know? And I didn't eat tomatoes probably till about 10 years ago. I wouldn't touch a tomato. But now I like them. What about the whole debate about red meat? You know, is that... Should people limit that? or? I think you have to eat everything in moderation. You can't just live on beef. And throw some chicken and fish and stuff in there too. But as close to natural as you can get, like this frozen processed stuff. Avoid breaded, a lot of breaded stuff. I try to avoid. Mm -hmm. uh, some of it is chicken flavored bread. And <laughs> I was at the store. I'm, it wasn't that long ago. You know how they have the end caps at the store, and there was this box, and I just had it because it had a chicken on it, and you know our grandkids were coming. And the boys like chicken nuggets, and if I'm not there, there's something quick Ed can fix. So anyway, it just happened to catch my eye, and it was a nice looking box. And then I read the box, and it said um, almost chicken or something like that. Almost chicken. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it was all something. I mean, I assume it was plant-based or something. I don't know, but... But I'm still wondering how they get almond milk out of almond milk. I know. How do you, how do you milk an almond? That's just. And I haven't figured that one out yet. <laughs> just eat the almond. Yeah. Eat the almond milk. <laughs> We're talking about, we mentioned earlier about the idea of losing weight. Um, I found it for me, just like I said, little slight changes. I will, I can eat, all right? I mean, I can eat a lot. I, and, Believe it or not, I used to eat more. Um, but my wife, you ever see those Sam Club's chickens? She'll go get them. They're like three pounds or something. Well, she'll go get one, and I cut it in half, and I'd eat half one day and a half the next day. I realized, do you know how much protein you could absorb at a time? Now, there's a little bit of a difference of opinion of that, but they generally say right around 25 or 30 grams of 
okay, eight ounces of chicken is a lot of protein. I think it's like 50 grams and eight ounces of protein. It's nearly 50 grams. And I'm eating. I don't know how many grams of protein was I eating? And you can't absorb it all, but it gets converted to glucose. So I'm thinking I'm being safe by eating this protein, but at the same time, I don't need it. And so I've, I've found that if I want to lose weight, I just eat measured amounts enough, which is probably more than most people eat <laughs> anyways, but I'll eat until I'm satisfied. I can eat and beyond, you know, and sometimes just eat until you're full and walking away. Right. The other thing I found too, now this is a little bit different, but I don't, I don't know is it, well, some people, you just have these horrible times, people have horrible times, be, when, when you're trying to diet for whatever reason, you're hungrier. What about the idea of eating more, you know, several times a day, mm -hmm. smaller meals? Um, and not only, I think it helps satiate your hunger, but I think you process it better. That, that kind of leads me to this. Um, what kind of stuff, you know, a lot of times we fill in ourselves with junk and our comfort foods, and especially at night. You know, what is it? I mean, I'll eat a big dinner, and a couple hours later I want to snack on something. What can, what can you replace some of the, I don't think we have to go through the list of everything that's junk. You know, chips and all that kind of stuff, you know, probably most of our cupboards. <laughs> well, I think a lot of it, I know, Ed and I, you eat what's there. If it's not there, you're not going to eat it. But if you have chips and you have cookies and you have this, you're going to eat it. Especially, like you said, as a kid, you were taught to clean your plate. But also, if you cleaned your plate, you got dessert. So it's kind of a learned behavior. Yeah, yeah. That it's hard to break, and it's it's comforting. What? Uh, so. I'm thinking, you know, sometimes when we talk about changing our diets, you know, everybody's always thinking about what they can't have. What are some of the things that we, we, can, we can have or uh, things that, you know, I mean, snacking isn't necessarily a bad thing. You, know? mm -mm. you can uh, always have vegetables, cut yeah, vegetables. Raw vegetables, mm -hmm. you know, snack on. Uh, what about, I'm popcorn, afraid to ask. Just plain popcorn. Popcorn? It's not too bad well, compared to a chip. There's probably fiber in that too. Yeah. The older we get, we <laughs> what about, I'm afraid to ask, what about like nuts? Nuts are, they have a lot of fat in them though. You can have nuts, you just don't go crazy. You can have everything, just don't go crazy. I eat a lot of peanuts. Got a lot of good fat, and a good it fat. A good, it it's not like cholesterol fat, fat. But you don't need two handfuls of them. What? Two handfuls? I got little hands. <laughs> <laughs> That's all? <laughs> but stuff like vegetables. Stuff. Like natural stuff. You can have an apple. You can have a pear. Fruit. Yeah, seriously. Fruit, vegetables, meat. It's really, you know, somebody somebody was giving me a hard time about the way I eat. And they said, I don't know, I'm, I'm worried about the way you eat. And I said, what am I eating this wrong? I said, I eat meat, I eat vegetables, I eat fruit. If it's processed, you shouldn't be eating it. There you go. That's my opinion. So... Okay, I'm just going to look at my, I'm, I'm going to read my little notes here, make sure I got everything I want to talk about. And it says, okay, I'm not talking about fat diets. I was I mentioned here I got proteins, carbs, fats, okay, whatever. Natural is possible. I wrote that down. Uh, things to avoid. Oh, okay, we talked about that. Drink lots of water. Lots of water. Lots of water. Water. All your organs need water. I literally drink two things. I drink water. When, and somebody said online the other day, they were challenging people to drink 68 ounces, 68, no, 64 ounces of water a day. And that's cool. I said, do you want me to cut back? I said, I shoot for 128. I try to drink a gallon of water every day. I don't always drink a gallon, but I always drink over 100 ounces a day. Um, good for your kidneys. Um, it's that's <laughs> we're mostly water. Yeah. You know, you, I don't know if you can drink yeah. too much water. Maybe you can. Well, Probably. some people can because of the, their heart issues. Uh, I mean, okay. really, if you're healthy, though, you sh you can drink a lot of water. And they used to they recommend 
one ounce for every two pounds of body weight. Okay, so so a hundred ounces. Right. So, and if you can't drink that much, I mean, drink as much as you can. I'm very guilty. I don't drink near enough water. But they a good indication is go by your urine. If your urine is has very little color, it's very light, just a little tint to it, then you're hydrated. If it's like apple juice or dark, you're way dehydrated. You need to drink a lot more water. Water. Oh, I don't want to miss this because we have something special. Uh, we, right, we talked a little bit about stuff to avoid. Okay, we got to show, <laughs> we showed this. <laughs> Dawn showed this in church this morning. Tell us what this is. <laughs> so, I'm sure you've all eaten a McDonald's hamburger. This is a McDonald's hamburger that is 11 years old. 11 years old. <laughs> it is never molded. It has never, I mean, really, it looks like a hamburger. It was one that was bought with no ketchup, no mustard, no nothing, just a hamburger and a bun. And, and where's it been kept for 11, 11 years? 11 years old. It has been sitting in a cupboard, in its original wrapper, in a cupboard, for 11 years we could sell this on ebay it has never i mean it's got to have so much preservatives and crap in it i mean it never smelled nothing it's never rotted it's never really molded no. or anything it's like no. what oh that's and i don't know the bigger miracle is the fact that it's still around Especially with, that Ed hasn't tried to eat it. Well, it's not, it's not it's mine. Not yours. It belongs to a friend of hers. <laughs> and she bought it to show her kids why she wouldn't take them to McDonald's. Wow. So you wonder, what, what is this? What is this exactly? <laughs> yeah, so that's something to avoid, I think. <laughs> so next time you go to McDonald's. <laughs> so, uh, we, we, were, we were driving home one time. And in Hancock, there's a McDonald's, and Ed was really hungry. He says, you know, I really, really want a Big Mac. So I said, all right. So he stopped and got one, and we're sitting there, and I think he had like two bites, and he says, now I remember why we don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I wrote this down, too. Um, uh, what about anything to add? To our diets like supplementing any you had this thing I, I thought maybe that's something probably we could we could do a whole video on that I guess but um, at the very you know I think it's a good idea for people to at least take a good, a multi. good multivitamin and then I guess the other stuff you really have to maybe go to the doctors have blood work and then they can say oh you're low on this you're low on that um, I was very low on vitamin D, and they gave me a little black pill that I took once a week. And I'm thinking, it's vitamin D, it should be bright and sunny because it's sunshine. <laughs> but it was black. But, you know, I was taking 50,000 milligrams a week because I was just so low on vitamin D. So, but a good multivitamin covers a lot of stuff. I, I think too that the older we get too that I think one one thing that's pretty important is to stay on top of uh, getting a physical every year and staying on top of those numbers. I, I know things watching all my numbers, you know, cholesterol numbers and uh, you know different different you know what is it PSAs and all this stuff for guys, you know, and, and but I, and what it's interesting too because it gives the doctors a lot more stuff to work with. If and when you can ever go see your doctor. That's true. Yeah. So, but yeah. Some video chats now. Yeah, but you know, I, I I try to take calcium and fish oil every day, and and vitamin, extra vitamin D and zinc, and I have a multivitamin, uh, vitamin C. You know, you vitamin C is awesome because you can actually take too much vitamin E. It's, I mean, vitamin D. You can actually take too much of that. I guess mm -hmm. um, most people are really don't have enough but mm -hmm. especially in the north down south they yeah because they get a little a little bit more sun yeah that's right we only get about 15 minutes of sun this time <laughs> of year and we don't want to go out in it because it's so cold so anyways um i think that was about everything i had was there anything you that we were forgetting i don't think so i just know that a lot of people i just want to add 
like dental care. Yeah. That's such a big thing. And it's funny because I know there's a commercial on TV now that says your mouth is the gateway to your body or something. And that really is true because you don't realize the, you know, the bacteria that's in your mouth is associated to the bacteria that's in your heart. So you really, you know, you want you don't want that stuff in there, and, and you know, once you start losing your teeth, you know, it's harder to eat. You, you know, I'm gonna, oh, I'm not gonna eat that because it's too hard to eat or whatever. And people just don't realize how important your dental care is, even if, you know, I know, um, you know, at work, you know, I have a toothbrush after lunch. I try to brush my teeth and. You know, you just got to stay up with your dental care because it really is so big with your digestion and, and whatnot. A lot of people don't think that because it's not fun going to the dentist. It's not fun. <laughs> I, I, I had a, it, I'm glad you brought that up. I had some, the, the dentist, I, you know, I've been, I am 62 years old. I've been to a dentist quite a few times. Every once in a while, though, they'll say something that I've never thought of before. She asked me, "Did you brush your teeth every day?" Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she said. Um, she goes, "How often do you floss?" I said, "Right before I come to the dentist." <laughs> she, said, she goes, "Well, you should brush twice a day." I'm like, okay. She goes, "But if you're going to do it once, once a day." She goes, "When do you normally brush?" I said, "In the morning." She said. If you're only going to do it once a day, do it at night. I'm like, what? And she goes, that's when you have the most, you know, the bacteria is going to just sit in there and all mm -hmm. that. I'm like, really? So since then, without fail, I brush my teeth before I go to bed. <laughs> I, um, I brush my teeth, and I have a water pick, and I'm always, I'm always surprised. i got a water hose. <laughs> how much more stuff I get out of my teeth after I thought I did a good job brushing my teeth. Really? Yeah. Water pick. I have a toothpick. I got some chicken in this tooth back here right now, even as we speak. <laughs> I've been working on it. I'll get it when I get home. Something to snack. <laughs> so, hey, I want to leave you with something, all right? I have a challenge, all right? I have a challenge. Um, I want you to think about something that you can change. Okay, uh, again, you watch something like this, you go, man, I can't, I don't know. No, okay, how about this? Maybe we just take one little step, one little step to get started. One little step is better than none. Um, what do they say? You know, how do you, well, this is stupid illustrations, but how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? You know, how do you you're walk a thousand miles one step at a time? Um, what can you remove or replace in your diet? today. Just one thing. Maybe it's soda. You know, drinking sodas. Maybe it's an energy drink or something that's really high in sugar. Start looking at labels. What can you replace? Just one thing today. I'm just saying, just place to start. Maybe you can do a bunch. One thing that you can replace today. What can you add to your schedule in the form of exercise today? All right. Think baby steps. All right, because if not, then we might, you, know, you might get discouraged. So, anyways, I really appreciate you doing this with me. This was fun. Was You're fun. like a it natural. Wasn't, it wasn't this. so bad. You're but I have a challenge for you. Oh boy! I'm gonna cut this out too. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the Christmas story? Yeah. And the little boy says, "If you uh, put your tongue on the flagpole." It's, it's going to stick, and they're going back and forth. Oh, that, okay, I'm yeah. talking. Yeah. <laughs> there, I'm thinking, I don't remember that being in the Bethlehem <laughs> Luke chapter 2 no, no, story. No, 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 the Christmas story, the movie that the I movie, hate The movie, the so Christmas much. story. Okay, yeah, put your tongue on the flag. Yep. Oh, yeah, and they were daring each other, and yeah. they said if you get a triple dog dare, you can't, you have to do it. Okay. So yeah. I'm going to triple dog dare you. So I have a challenge for you. Oh. You, you eat good. Okay. I'm going to challenge you to 300 hours of outside activity this year. 300 hours? 300 of hours. Oh, that'll, that'll be easy. Yeah, not riding the lawnmower. That doesn't count. <laughs>
like pushing the lawnmower. Now that counts. Outside playing with Killian, going for a walk. 300, 300 hours. 300 hours. And it's triple dog dare, so you can't turn it. Triple dog dare. I can't, and it's got to be, I can't be riding the lawnmower. No. That's really not an outside activity. I, I don't know how to tell you this, but I do it outside. <laughs> I don't have a covered lawn. <laughs> and I have to do this. <laughs> Most of the time I have to push it. <laughs> Pushing counts. Push if I push them more? If you push the lawn. Okay. That 300, hours 300 hours of outside. Count, work on the car, stuff like that. Anything where I'm outside working. Outside, like doing something. Okay. Going for a walk, playing with the kids. See, I wish I'd have known you were going to do this to me because I would have come up with a challenge to you. Okay, I'm going to challenge you. <laughs> no, I'm done. So, okay. all right, all right. I guess. It was on the back of the paper. I didn't, I thought that that was something else. I was, <laughs> oh, what is, did I write that or did she? What did that have to do with <laughs> the Christmas story challenge? I thought, something to do with Christmas. Because I think you do a lot. But I don't think you do a lot outside. No. I painted the house. You should have gave it to me last year. Oh, well, it's too late. It doesn't count. <sighs> yeah, okay. Yes, ma'am. You can't even count mowing the lawn. You can with push lawn mower. That counts. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Take her in and go for a walk. Okay. <laughs> Sure. All right. Um, there it is. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Anybody <laughs> actually watches this? <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you. I should pray. That's how you close these things, you know, when you pray. Because <laughs> sometimes you're like, okay, bye. No, I, I'm going to pray, and then we'll say bye. All right. Okay. <laughs> Lord God, thank you, good Lord, for loving us like you do. And Lord, I thank you so much for Dawn and for her willingness to do this. And, Lord, I thank you for the folks watching this. And Lord, I just pray, God, that you help us. Lord, help us to be good stewards with what you've given us. And uh, Lord, uh, even, even including this body, um, God, I pray that you help us, Lord, to, to take care of ourselves so that we can serve you better. Uh, Lord, I do not want to be a burden on anybody the older I get. I don't want to be that guy. God, help, help us, Lord, to maybe take care of ourselves as best we can. I know we're not going to be able to see everything coming, but Lord, I think that uh, this will definitely help. So, Lord, again, thank you for this time. Lord, I pray that you'll, uh, again, uh, bless the folks watching this, and Lord, that you'll bless our church and bless the remainder of our day. And pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, all right, guys. Thanks. All right, you take care. All right, stay healthy. Bye. <laughs>